In this video, we're going to have a look at templates and how they work within Luminar AI. So let's dive right in. When you first open an image in Luminar AI, the AI technology scans the image from thousands of other images and determines that in this case it's a portrait. And in this case, I've chosen a white background as well to show you something else. So Luminar AI is recommending for this blockbuster, experimental and monochrome. You have many other options that you can choose as well. It's just the AI technology is recommending based on this being a portrait, that the portrait edits will be best, but you can choose any one at all to suit style of image you're after. In this case, I am going to go with the recommendation of portraits. So what I can do is I can go along the top here and see the portraits along here, or I can go down the way and see all from the portrait section. So within this, I have experimental with the categories in there, click back, Easy Portraits, these ones here, Essence, these templates here, and last but not least, Monochrome, these templates here. For this one, I am going to go with Easy Portraits, and I'm just going to choose Tack Sharp. So there you go, you saw the difference already. And if you're wondering what the template has added to it, if you go over to the Edit tab, you'll notice that in the Essentials panel, Light has been adjusted, AI Enhance, structure, details, and there's a white dot here in the portrait section, of course. We have face, face lights not been added, eyes, yes, there's been some adjustment to the eyes, the mouth, no adjustments whatsoever, but you can go in and adjust these if you wish. You could push the saturation of the lips and you'll see they become more saturated. We could darken the lips and you'll see the darkness coming in and we can whiten the teeth slightly. So there you go. So that's the adjustments we've already made to this template. And down here it now says Tack Sharp Edited. Also within the Pro Panel, we have Optics have been adjusted, Super Contrast and Colour Harmony. What we're going to do with this one is, we are going to go into the Sky. It's a white background. I said I wanted to show you something different for it. Within Sky AI, I'm going to make a selection and I'm going to go for Blue Sky 4. And Blue Sky 4 has dropped in, I'm going to pull back the Horizon Blending and the reason I'm doing that is because of this area here. Then I'm also going to move the Horizon position, like so. There is still a faint line there, but I can deal with that later in Crop if I need to. I'm also going to flip the sky with this image. There we go. And if you're wondering why I flipped the sky, I noticed that there is a slight haloing here, so I'm putting a lighter colour behind it. In this case it's white. The other thing that I can do if I wish, I can warm the sky up slightly and I can also push the sky exposure. So let's go for that for this image. The template has now been adjusted and if I like this template and I want to continue it through other images, what I can do is I can go down to these three dots down here. I can click these three dots and just choose save. So you will see that that is tack sharp, edit, and it's been edited. I can either jump back to the templates up here, or go over here to the star and to my collection. Had I favorited any of the templates, they would appear here, and I'll show you that after this. If I purchased any, they will drop in there. User templates. So this one now is tack sharp, edit. That's been applied to this one because we've made adjustments, added a sky background. I want to rename that so as that I'll know what it is for future reference. So if I click the three dots here and click rename, and I'm just going to call this Tack Sharp with Sky 4, so as that I remember what Sky it is I used. And if I hit the return key, that saves. So we now have that template that can be applied to any of the other images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this image. And once we've got this image opened, I'm going to apply Tack Sharp with Sky 4. And it drops in straight away. From here, I'm going to apply it to another image, and I'm going to apply it to the one with the orange background. So if I choose that image there, Tack Sharp with Sky 4, 
and I chose this because of this reason to show you what you can do from here. I tried this earlier and I saw what it did to it so I thought I would show you a quick result on how to change it. From here, if I go back into edit, because of what's going on here, because it's such a strong colour in the background, I found that if I went into black and white and chose convert to black and white, the resulting image was a nice result, it was a nice finished image. So now do I go back through the other images and re-edit the template? Well no, I don't have to. This one is selected, so I could right click here, go up to adjustments and I can go sync adjustments or copy adjustments. If I go to that image there, if I hold down control and choose that image there and then the first one, and then right click, adjustments, sync adjustments. If you watch down here, two of them have now changed. So that was relatively quick, editing a template, saving a template, and then applying or syncing the same template with a new adjustment over to another two images. If I wanted to, I could go in here, now that this is tack sharp with Sky 4 edited, I could click save, go back up to templates, go into tack sharp with sky 4 edited, rename that one and we'll just call this BW for black and white and then hit return key and now I have that one as well. For example, I'll choose the old chap again and I'll just click there. And you can see how that's edited that one as well. So you can run whatever template you create through other images even after editing them, you can then save them and rename them and use them again. So slowly but surely, these would build up. If I go to Neon Jungle, which is one I used for this one down here, and it shouldn't change much at all. As you see, it just lightens slightly. That's working with the same effect and with my textures added to it as well. I mentioned during the video about favoriting your templates. So we could go back into templates, and I could scroll down, I'm just going to do it with one of them for this, just to show you. And I am going to choose Easy Landscapes, and in Forest Stream, I'm going to click the heart. I'll also go up to Clean Light and click the heart as well. So now if I go back into my collection, and I go into Favourites, Clean Light and Forest Stream are there. And you can build these up so that you can have easy access to the templates that you use more often than not. Hopefully that helped with the template side of Luminar AI. I am trying to keep these videos as short as possible, but yet still remain informative and give you a good overall view of what you can do with them. So hopefully you'll tune in for the next one. Remember, stay safe, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.